Oh, hello there, everyone. Welcome to this lovely fireside chat that has been organically set up by our lovely Chopra Global team. I'm Megan Monaghan. I am currently hosting the Infinite Possibilities event that we have going on in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where the incomparable Deepak Chopra is, of course, our main speaker and sharing all of the wisdom. And we're so lucky to take a step away Thank and you. have a Thank little you. chat with all of you. I would love to know where you're from, so if you feel so inclined, um, let us know. Let us know where you're joining us from. And let us know if you have grabbed Deepak's new book, MetaHuman. That is what we are going to be um, speaking about today. Deepak, is this your 90th book? So they say, yeah. <laughs> I don't count. How does that even happen? 90 know. books. I've known you for 12 years. Right. And you have, I don't know how many books you've written in 12 years, but that's a long time and that's a lot of books. Yeah, it unfolds. I don't take any personal responsibility. <laughs> it's the universe asking you time and time again to translate the wisdom. So can you tell us what metahuman means? Because I read about it in the book and I was so surprised because sure. so I didn't know. Meta means beyond and yeah. human in this case means the human mind. The human mind is a conditioned mind. As soon as a child is born, it's given a provisional identity, a name, a race, a economic history of the parents, religion, uh, social background, nationality. So that becomes the identity of a human being. The I. Yeah, it becomes the limited I. Mm -hmm. It becomes the limited I. What is reality? before we assume a provisional identity. The reason I say provisional because the body is provisional. Once it was there, once upon a time it was a fertilized egg, at some point it will disappear and it's constantly changing. And it is only experienced as an intermittent stream of sensations and perceptions. So your body is a provisional identity, your mind is a provisional identity because you know, our thoughts evolve, our thinking evolves. Personality is in provisional identity. What is identity prior to all these provisional roles we play as human beings? Why is it important to get there <coughs> and shift our identity from that which is provisional to that which is absolute? Mm -hmm. So that's... And get comfortable meditating. resting there. And, and then just jumping into all the roles. Yeah, jumping or letting the roles unfold. I yeah. mean, I, I think one of the biggest messages of the book is um, once you rest in being, then every experience unfolds synchronistically. So there's loss of personal agency. Mm -hmm. You just asked me, how did I write 90 mm -hmm. books? And my answer is, I don't feel I wrote them. Mm -hmm. They were written. Yeah. Yeah. You were the vessel. Yeah. So. Yeah. You talk about two things in the book that are, un that are unique to us as creatures mm -hmm. that I found really fascinating that I've never really thought about. One of which is that we can experience self-pity mm -hmm. and think that there's like a deservedness. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk a little bit about right now, I think in our sort of spiritual society, if you will, mm -hmm. and a lot of the superficiality of it, there's a lot of like spiritual bypassing. Are you familiar with that phrase? A little bit. Where it's like, oh, that feeling isn't positive, so I'm just going to pretend like it's not real and just lean into. So I'm curious where you think the line is between looking at yourself and looking at what doesn't feel great and looking at who you are and what you want and also having, which you talk about, that greater perspective that we are a part of this whole and that it's so important to be in service of, of the whole and not just within ourselves. Yeah. So... What we call everyday reality, including the room we're in and the mountains we're seeing in the mm -hmm. distance and the desert, our own body, furniture, yeah. all of this is a projection of the conditioned mind. And how we feel about it is whether we feel negative or positive or emotions that are also generated in the conditioned mind. What the book is saying is if you wake up from this conditioning, and that's not by manipulating experience, denying certain experiences, mm -hmm. um, or favoring certain experiences, it's by being totally independent of the experience itself. Intrinsically independent of the experience, 
even as we can enjoy it or not enjoy it. So, you know, people talk a lot these days about hope. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the word hope, it automatically implies despair. Because if you have no yeah. despair, then... You can't experience hope. You can't experience right. hope. So what meta reality is to be independent of both hope and despair. If you're independent of both hope and despair, you're independent of the negative and the positive. You're independent of hot and cold. Mm -hmm. In other words, all experiences by contrast, but where you stand as a witnessing awareness is intrinsically independent of all experience. Independent. So the awareness of a thought is not a thought. Mm -hmm. Whether it's negative or positive, it's not what reality is. The thought is a fluctuation in consciousness, positive, negative, that's a story. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything we experience is like that. But what is the awareness which is totally intrinsically free of that? That's who we are. And that's infinite. That's why we say this course is infinite right. possibilities. That's infinitely creative. It's self-regulating. It's self-evolving. It's self-organizing. It's synchronistic. It's the source of attention, intention, insight, intuition, creativity, vision, higher calling. And if we can work from there, because reality is our projected conditioned mind, or what some people call dream, mm -hmm. these days nightmare, mm -hmm. extinction of species, yeah. mechanized death, war, terrorism, eco-destruction, social economic injustice, and risking our own extinction. We've projected this and we can change it by going to the source of all experience and all knowing. So knowledge is only fragmented and finite, mm -hmm. but the source of knowing is infinite. Mm -hmm. And that's who we are. Yeah. That is meta human. Yeah. And I think it's so important, and we've talked about it a little bit at this event so far, the difference between just intellectually understanding something and embodying it. Yeah. Which is what you talked about. Intellectual about understanding book. actually has led us in the wrong direction. Yeah. Intellectual understanding creates what is called the subject object split, mm -hmm. Sanskrit word pragya aparad, the mistake of the intellect. The intellect says I and the rest of the world, when in fact it's one wholeness of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, and stories that we make up around that. So meta-human actually allows us access to our own creativity, vision, synchronicity, good luck, being at the right place at the right time, the state of grace, all these metaphors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, meaningful coincidences, right. these unfold spontaneously and synchronistically when we stop using the mind. The mind is the culprit actually. Mm -hmm. The mind conditions infinite possibilities into finite right. slices of experience. Right. Well and we use our we use the most constricted part of our being, which is our mind, Correct. to come up with like the dreams for our life. Correct. Correct. Which is just set you're short changing you yourself. Grounded yourself in your sense of yeah. self, then everything would unfold spontaneously, creatively, it would evolve, it would be synchronistic, and it would be true. So, you know, when people, I, I see go to these days, people are into vision boards and yeah. setting up goals. Yeah. All you have to ask yourself is, what do I want? And go into the stillness, and everything unfolds by itself. Well, not unlike, you know, what you said about writing a book, not not attaching to the external expression, yeah, but, yeah. but why you want the thing why, you want what are you and what your heart is share. craving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it's so important, obviously meditation is vastly important to expand your consciousness, to be able to have that level of awareness of your soul, of the, of the awareness of what lies yeah. beneath See, that mind. See, here's the, this very key thing. Meditation bypasses all systems of thought, mm -hmm. whether they're religion or philosophy or theology, or science or mythology, meditation bypasses every story human beings have told. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are many kinds of meditation. We use yeah. primordial sound as our backbone, but we also do reflective self-inquiry. Mm -hmm. We do vipassana, which is awareness of sensations, images, thoughts. We look at the whole wheel of awareness, which gives rise to experience, and mm -hmm. then who or what is having the experience. Right. Meditation is key to bypass thought. 
because meditation takes us to the source of thought. That's what yoga is. To the awareness of thought. To the to uh, yeah, and that which produces thought. Mm -hmm. To the awareness of thought, and then the realization that thought is a modified form of awareness itself, but it's a finite modified form. Mm -hmm. Awareness is infinite. Right. One of the other things you said in the book was that humans uniquely have the ability to narrate their experience. Mm -hmm. Most animals aren't walking around thinking about how they're thinking and living and so I think I think that's fascinating and I've never really I've never really thought about that. But one of the biggest things that shifted for me once I started doing work with the Chopra Center and, and meditating was that ability to notice the thought, as yeah. you're saying, and then start to tell a different story. Yeah, as soon as you notice a thought, you also notice that you're not the thought because you're right. the witness right. who's having the thought. Right. I'll never forget when you said you are not your thoughts. You're the thinker of the thought. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't have to believe every thought that I have? Like, that's yeah. the best news ever. Most thoughts are not yours. If I ask yeah. you what were you thinking two weeks ago at 4.45 in the afternoon, yeah. you can't remember. No idea. So that means it wasn't important. That also means most thoughts are not important, right. except creative thoughts. Why is it so, I don't know if the word is tempting or or common for us as humans to narrate in the negative, to narrate our experience in a way that supports what we don't want rather than what we do want? That comes from the illusion of the separate self. Mm -hmm. So when you feel separate from everything that is around there, that engenders fear. Mm -hmm. And fear engenders things like anger and hostility and guilt and resentments mm -hmm. and shame and ultimately depression. So as the great wisdom traditions tell us, um, all this thing that we call negativity and suffering comes from the hallucination of the separate self. But meditation by bypassing thought creates a experience that we call unity consciousness, which means connection with life, in which case truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, love, compassion, joy, they spontaneously come out, not as rules of morality, but as byproducts of the knowing that you are not separate. You and everything else is one. This new mathematical formula, infinity is uh -huh. equal to zero is equal to one. Mm. I just made that up. I like that. We should copyright that. Copyright yeah. that for all Unless of you. Unless somebody has. I'm, <laughs> it's the next I'm book. Sure, <laughs> no, I'm sure somebody's come up with it already. Everything that we say, is we've heard recycled consciously consciousness. Or, or <laughs> unconsciously. Fine. Well, you know, if it's in my next book, don't take it personally. I just borrowed it from you. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite sentences in the book is desire is an intoxication with divine love if it is delivered the desire has served us in getting unstuck and unstuck is embodying love if we understand the meaning of love so most people think of love as a sentiment or an right. emotion which is of course one of the expressions of love but love ultimately is unity consciousness love is knowing that you as a body mind and anybody else has a body mind is from the same source of infinite non-local consciousness when you experience that there's no conflict mm -hmm. and then love becomes the ultimate truth at the heart of all creation mm -hmm. this is the truth yeah. love truth goodness beauty go together when you see yourself in an object then you call that beauty mm -hmm. when you see yourself in another person you call that love but actually everything that you see is a projection of your conditioned mind. Of how you see yourself. Or how you see yourself. And, or how you want to see yourself. Or how you've been conditioned to yeah. see yourself. Yeah. You know, because most people actually don't question it. They're, they're programmed. It's like, you know, you're, we're artificial robots. We're mm -hmm. biological robots. Yeah. The usual mind right. is a robot. Right. You know? Well, and that's imprinted, I've heard you say this, it's imprinted for the first time around like seven or eight years old. By right? then that it starts snapshot? to consolidate, yeah. But as soon as language occurs and storytelling happens, storytelling is basically a theme around raw experience of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. The stories we tell ourselves are also collective stories. You know, this, these days the stories of war and conflict and leaders who are gangsters and thugs and mobsters, every leader in the world except 
I could name a couple of <laughs> uh, our gangsters because yeah. our current mental condition is one of separation, anxiety, hysteria, Scarcity, melodrama, yeah. and uh, fear. Mm -hmm. So what are some, um, let's get like a little practical. What are some ways to notice when you're in fear and not in love and create a shift within yourself to, well, or very, a pattern interrupt? Very simplistic answer would be observe without identifying with it, observe without judging it. Mm -hmm. So when you can have an experience without giving it a label, a judgment, uh, you know, a story, to be a still witness, the witnessing awareness of experience, but also of yourself. Krishnamurti used to say, the highest intelligence is to observe yourself without judging yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you become the witnessing awareness in which all experience happens, positive and negative, then just the awareness of that begins a transformation which is evolutionary. You don't fight thought. Fighting a thought is a thought. Right. Uh, Favoring a positive thought or a negative thought is also a thought. It's an intention. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do any of that. You just become the witnessing awareness in which thoughts arise and subside. And then even the witnessing awareness ultimately collapses into what we call pure consciousness, mm -hmm. which is pure knowledge, which is pure creativity, which is pure love, which is evolution, which is truth, <coughs> which is goodness, which is harmony. Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. Satyam means truth, Shivam means pure consciousness, Sundaram means pure beauty. So Tagore used to say, when I see beauty, I know it as truth. Truth, beauty, existence, awareness of existence, and what they call bliss. You know, Sat Chit Ananda. Ananda is bliss that comes from the knowing of your limitless self. When you know yourself as without limitations, infinite, timeless, eternal, pure, then that automatically creates the feeling of joy. Mm -hmm. and I think it's so interesting too how how much more comfortable it is to rest in the witnessing awareness when you're experiencing something positive. Yeah. So it's just practice, right? When you get to rest in what's not so comfortable, what's not so joy-filled, what's not so... the main thing is to realize that whatever is happening is a fluctuation, a vibration, a modified form of consciousness, and whatever is happening, whether it's negative or positive, is fluctuating. You can't hold on to it. In fact, one of the things way to get rid of negative thoughts is to really focus on them and try to hold on to them and soon you'll find it's impossible. One of the ways to get rid of negative thoughts is to focus on them and, and try to hold them and try to keep them. Yeah, keep them. Then you'll see it's impossible. Because you have... Right? It's, the, it's the denial that causes the resistance mm -hmm. that You've heard the expression, what you resist persists. Right. So bringing so, in acceptance and not arguing with what is. Just embracing it. Right. It's just, you can't have a positive without a negative. You mm -hmm. can't have a uh, electrical um, flow without a positive pole and a negative pole. Just right. like you can't have up without down right. or pleasure without pain or, you know, suffering without happiness. No, I didn't say joy. Joy mm -hmm. is independent of both pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So joy is innate. Happiness is a mood. Right. Conditional. It's, a, yeah. it's also a, actually is the biggest false promise that humans mm -hmm. give each other. And they say, I am happy because. And then the because you can add anything, you know, yeah. good relationship, right. money, success, fame, fortune. It's very provisional. It's actually a form of misery. So well, because there's such attachment to that. Yeah. And, and then you become can, constricted to how uh, it's yeah, going. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. outcome. And yeah. So true joy is independent of both pain and suff pain and pleasure. It's also independent of happiness and sorrow. True joy. It's right. innate. Right. So it's embodying the traits, and you talk about them in the book, but embodying traits like joy and love that don't have the opposite so once you that get, are the once you get to ground state yeah it's automatic joy right. is already there right it's joy is hidden by all the things that we think we need to make us 
joyful or happy. Mm -hmm. It's camouflaged. If you take before you have a desire, you're already at peace and joy. Then you have a desire, then you start going about trying to fulfill it, and you get back in the end to where you started from. So that means where you started from is also where you end up. Right. And everything else in between is a fluctuation. Right. Whether it's positive or negative doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can't have the positive without the negative. Right. No experience is valid unless there's contrast. But what, come, what states come from that ground state don't have those two charges, right? Don't have the positive and negative, they just are. At the ground state, there's yeah. independence of both. Right. The positive and negative d are dependent on the collective story, right. which then becomes your personal story. Right. So when you inject an awareness yeah. of both of those stories. That's it. And, and detach and you, from you, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. not only do you, you construct a story, you identify with the story. But mm -hmm. infinite means there are infinite stories. Whatever mm -hmm. story you have, it's one version of infinite stories. Yeah. Yeah. We should choose different stories more often than not. Yeah, I think. or be independent of the stories. Yeah. Who are you without your personal history? You're God. You're infinite. And then what happens is your personal story camouflages the infinite into this, that identity, mm -hmm. which is very provisional and time bound. Yeah. So we're talking about synchronicities. Another line that I really liked is that it's easy to become intoxicated by the prospect of our own boundless potential. Mm -hmm. I love that line. Yeah, it's also... You should really think about this whole writing thing as like maybe something you should do again. It's the same as the intoxication <laughs> of love. Right. Same thing. Right. So how do we... My question is going to be, how do we stay anchored amidst all of the lightness of being that comes from the awareness? How Humans do we stay? throughout history have also devised systems that go beyond stories and go beyond constructs and go beyond systems of thought. And these are various practices that un all come under the rubric of meditation. Mm -hmm. So mantra meditation takes you into what we call transcendence, right. which is beyond thought, to the source of thought. As all yoga, all forms of yoga, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Karma Yoga, yoga means union with the source of all experience, which is also the source of thought and perception. So mantra meditation, primordial sound meditation is one way. But then there's also reflective self-inquiry. We actually when we do deep reflective self inquiry we realize there's no such thing as a human as a universe it's another human concept there's no such thing as a body there's no such thing as a mind there's only the awareness that is modifying itself into those experiences and those interpretations of those experiences so reflective self inquiry has a long tradition in the vedanta it's called atma darshan atma means soul darshan means the knowing of the soul, which then takes us beyond that into what is called cosmic consciousness, divine consciousness, unity consciousness. And then there's vipassana, which is being aware of experience in the present moment, but that's also subsets of experience in the present moment, whether it's a perception, a sound, a color, a taste, a smell, but also awareness of the body, awareness of what's happening inside the body awareness of mental space of emotions and thoughts and awareness of the web of relationship when we do all of this and you know it's a gradual unfoldment you realize that you're not the dream you are the dreamer dreams are infinite transient ephemeral evanescent and basically flash points snapshots of perceptual and cognitive experience. You are not that. You are the awareness that is expressing, vibrating itself as mind, body, intellect, ego, perceptions. You know, we have a good map of this in Ayurveda, the mm -hmm. physical body, the subtle body, the causal body. Mm -hmm. So the physical body is the visible perceptual experience. The subtle body is the mind, intellect, and ego. Mm -hmm. And the causal body is jiva, the individual soul, atman, the unconditioned soul, and brahman, the universal soul. That's a good map. Mm -hmm. But actually, all that's happening is consciousness is dreaming experiences 
that are species specific. So we are having a human dream. A crocodile is having a crocodile dream. <laughs> a bat is having a bat dream. A butterfly is having a butterfly dream. Uh, an insect with a hundred eyes is having a <laughs> kaleidoscopic dream. These are all modes of knowing and that the root of all this is only one infinite consciousness and we are that. So what about when I'm having a dream that I'm a dolphin? And what if, is that possible for me to have a human dream through the context of a dolphin dream? Well, if you can transcend, <coughs> if you transcend uh -huh. to the source of thought and you shift consciousness into the dolphin experience in stillness, you may have a glimpse of the subjective mm -hmm. experience of a dolphin, but most people don't have that experience, right. okay? Except in shamanic journeys right. or ayahuasca or LSD or right. mushrooms right. or whatever. And then also it's transient because your habitual modes of perception disappear. However, in the book I talk about a woman who was a neuroscientist that I met who could mm -hmm. communicate with birds. With birds. And yeah. she did that by transcending to the stillness and actually communing with the bird in stillness. Now, I know other people who've studied psychic uh, parrots mm -hmm. or dogs mm -hmm. that are, uh, have precognition or uh, dogs that are also psychic or even cats. So as people are beginning to understand that consciousness is both species specific that we all live in a bubble of consciousness, but the bubble has leaky margins. <laughs> so every bubble is in effect connected with every bubble. Then theoretically, you can shape shift into the experience of other modes of knowing. We are shape shifting anytime, all the time. Right. Right? You lift your arm, you've altered the structure of space time geometry. Yeah. Okay. Anytime you move, you breathe, the entire universe, that's why there's an expression when an electron. Uh, moves the whole universe shakes and vibrates. That's the butterfly effect, right? That's when a the, butterfly, yeah, it's all so. Right. It's, you know, you think that you are just changing your experience of body mind by moving around or walking or losing weight or gaining weight, mm -hmm. but actually, once you do that, the entire ecosystem of relationships has assumed a different identity. I went. There's a. a cave nearby that mm -hmm. you can go see that someone carved out by hand over like five years and the soil around this whole mountain i guess you would call it is um crypto soil i think is what it's called and the woman who was touring us said that if you step in that soil it takes the soil 20 years to recover from your footprint and i just thought if, oh my gosh like how many that, footprints are we not aware of okay and if you step <laughs> on the soil on the moon it's there for eternity because there's no atmosphere to disturb it. It's mind-blowing yeah. when you think about your impact on every single thing around you. Correct. Because, because the you that is having the impact is actually a universal consciousness through a conditioned mind. Mm -hmm. The mind is the, is the filter through which we experience everything. And we call it reality, but even the mind is a modification and a learned modification through social constructs and social stories. Yeah. So um, let's just talk briefly about some kind of tips and, and hacks for synchronicities and navigating synchronicities. Because I think one of the biggest things that comes from this awareness, from this ground state, is the, is the ability to leverage and play with all of those subtle energies that come yeah. when you move an arm and when you... You know what, this is the simplest thing to orchestrate a synchronicity is to ask, first go into stillness, either through mantra meditation or just vipassana, or just observing the breath. And then in that stillness, ask yourself just one question, what do I want? Allow any sensation, image, feeling or thought to come to you and then let it go. And because consciousness is self-organizing and self-correlating and synchronistic and creative, the very intention organizes its own fulfillment through synchronicity. 
So whatever that intention is, it has to be subtle. It has to be at the cusp mm -hmm. of the manifest and the unmanifest. There has to be what we call in yoga, dharna, dhyan, samadhi. Yeah. Dharna is the subtle intention. Dhyan is the process of meditation. Samadhi is transcendence. What we do with our sutras, yeah. that is actually orchestrating synchronicity. So connecting with the deepest seed of that intention and desire. Correct. What is that deepest seed, which is sometimes even unmanifest in our own self. We don't right. know what that desire is, right. but it's there. It's there in the, um, what do you call, the hidden uh, passages and the dark alleys and mm -hmm. the ghost-filled attics of the mind. Mm. But you have to go deep. Yeah. And then let go. And then let go. And surrender. And surrender. Which is super easy, so, you know. <laughs> Miss my life. <laughs> I sometimes think that everybody in the world has issues except me. <laughs> that might, you might not be wrong. <laughs> you might not be wrong, I mean, Deepak. <laughs> if you have an issue, then you're bamboozled by your conditioned mind. <laughs> to unbamboozle yourself, MetaHuman, is an incredible tool. Also here um, in the Chopra Global community, online and in person, we have such incredible in-person events where you can dive deeper into how to actually put all these tools into practice, practicing playing around with them, embodying them through things like yoga and group meditation, which is so powerful. So we look forward to hopefully seeing you at one of those experiences in 2020. And in the meantime... Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars and be a meta-human. Be a meta-human.